by far the high percentage of all industries, this is not electric, the answer is no. And I go back to until the board incentivizes both to have to work with each other, it isn't going to be there unless you just happen to have certain people who want to make it happen. But then they're trying to make it happen despite the system, not because of the system. My suggestion for securing industrial control systems, regardless of industry, are the following. Number one, senior management has to be on board. They need to make resources available. They have to make, incentivize people to work together. And they have to make this a priority. Um, and it's got to be done throughout the life cycle, you know, from, bef from when you're procuring the equipment. What is it that you want to procure? from when you're designing how they're going to be operated. You know, the design and the operations of the systems. And then what are you going to do when you're ready to essentially, you know, pull the systems and, you know, either mothball a site or whatever. But it's the whole life cycle. The second thing is to know what you have installed. Very, very, very few people the official never say never. Know what they actually have installed in the field that can be cyber vulnerable. I've never done a walk down of any facility where I haven't found cyber vulnerable equipment that the company didn't realize was either there or was connected, okay? And not only that, what level of software is actually being used, what you need to do, okay? So the second item is you've got to know what you have. You can't secure what you have if you don't know what you have. The third thing is once you know what you've got, you need to do a risk assessment and ask yourself, what can each of these systems do to my mission? If you're an electric utility, your mission is to either produce or deliver electricity. How can these systems affect that? And depending on how much they can would be how much, you're going, how much effort you'd put in. You know, if you're a refinery, what is this going to do to the operation of the refinery, to the ability to produce different, you know, fuels, et cetera, different products? You know, if you're a pipeline, I mean, all of these questions, but the, the point is, what do these systems do to your mission? And part of the mission is not just reliability. In the industrial world, it's also safety. So once you've prioritized, the next important thing, I believe, is that you've got to have appropriate policies and procedures. Because if you haven't trained people on what to do, what to look for, they will bypass anything you put out there. You've got to have them not only using the policies, but understanding why the policies are there. They understand why they're there for productivity or reliability or safety. They need to have that same understanding when it comes to security. And then obviously another piece is you need to look at and understand what technology belongs because the technology has to be there. In our world, item number one is do no harm, okay? It may not be a good security product, but if it does no harm, at least it's benign. No matter what it is, if it can impact the performance of a safety, it will not be used. Or not the performance of the safety, the performance of the system. So whatever technology you're going to have, has got to be benign to operation. Secondly, and this is harder, is to really demonstrate that it really will do the job we want it to do. Security is very tough. Um, I wanted to point out one thing that came out about two weeks ago, uh, working with a particular utility. We were doing the first project on uh, anywhere in this country with a utility on how do you secure legacy control systems for reliability? 
This is the only utility who's doing it for reliability. Everybody else is doing it for a check the box. So the vendor that we were working with, the control system vendor said, I want to do this. Please tell us what you want it secured to. Well, this was our epiphany. As a control system engineer, we have very succinct numbers for reliability. For example, a SCADA system can have no more than six minutes of downtime a year. I'm just throwing that out as an example. So the question is, for reliability, we have a number. The real question is, okay, how does security help meet the goal of norm, no more than six minutes of downtime a year? So the issue came up, what number do I put for a firewall? What number do I put for intrusion detection? What we're talking about is an engineering discipline that lives with hard numbers. We're talking about a security world that lives in a subjective world. Because when you ask people, are you, you generally ask, are you secure or are you not secure? How many times do you ask, how secure? Or can you tell me, are you 50% secure, seven, whatever? But all of a sudden, we ran into this problem. Again, these two different worlds colliding. The engineering world has firm numbers. The security world has this notion of yes, no. How do we piece these together, or can we even? So there's a whole area here we need to be working on, because I think it's intuitively obvious that something like a firewall or intrusion detection or whatever is a good thing. But how do you put a number on it? And what does that mean to, for example, skater reliability or safety of a nuclear plant? We have very firm numbers. What is it doing?